Welcome everyone. God bless your hearts. I want to greet you in the name of the Father and his precious Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Thought I'd get on here just a moment early, give people a time to, to log in. Uh, it's been a wonderful day today, <clears throat> and a pretty day in, in Arkansas. So we just want to welcome everyone and, and uh, say we're glad that we have an opportunity to address all of you one more time. And, um, I, uh, I'm sure all of our local church people know by now that we are going to have service this Sunday at 1130. We will not have our regular Bible study at uh, breakfast at 930 in the dining room or 10 o'clock Bible study, but we'll only have 1130 service this Sunday, and we'll see how it goes. Uh, I know that our our mayor has has not lifted, the last I heard, he hasn't lifted the 9 o'clock curfew, so I had thought about trying to have service Wednesday night, but I thought, well, we, you know, I don't want to violate <clears throat> these guidelines. <laughs> By the way, uh, our governor, Governor Hutchison, Asa Hutchison, he did, I was thankful that he made the statement that um, that these, uh, what he gave for churches was guidelines, not directives, like everything else he gave was directives. But he, in, he mentioned that there is a constitution in America that protects churches in separation of church and state, and therefore he did not direct anything to churches. He just gave forth guidelines. However, he did say he was thankful for the pastors and ministers of the churches in Arkansas that, that were willing to abide by the guidelines and try to work and protect their people. So anyway, I was glad that he mentioned that. Uh, and uh, so, so anyway, this Sunday, we will be having a service at 1130. And um, we will, you know, we're going to still try to be careful and have some guidelines. We're going to ask you not to shake hands or hug each other. And, and we will try to uh, maintain spacing families that are of course that are, have been together and are together don't need to they can all sit together in, in the same pew but but those that are not together with them well then we're we're going to try to space you so listen to the ushers and they'll try to help you out we're not going to try to regulate things so much that we can't worship god we we we're there to worship the lord and see what the Spirit has to say to the church. So we're looking forward to that. Um, we had a good Bible study last night uh, in the Dominican Republic. Um, I worked with Brother Green on the Zoom app. Uh, by the way, there is a Google Meet app, which is very similar to Zoom, where I think about 100 people can get on at one time you can see everyone that's on uh, if you want. And, uh, but Brother Green and I were able to be on the same page where you could see us both and he could interpret everything I was saying to the Bible study we had last night in the Dominican Republic. And I've been, uh, I've been working towards that. Um, something I want to find out from Brother Painter if he can help us. I don't know if we can use the Google Meet app and... Uh, if some way we can uh, live stream that, uh, even, I don't know if we can live stream it on a Facebook page like we're doing right now or how, but anyway, something we're looking into and, and uh, I've had several people ask us to continue these uh, Thursday night Bible studies, which I'm considering doing. Uh, as you well know that I've, um, you know, I've tried to maintain our Sunday broadcast uh, live broadcast <clears throat> in a different line, more uh, encouraging. But on Thursday nights, we got off on talking about the 
succession of, of things that has to transpire yet in the end of the Gentile world. And we've basically covered the fact that the church needs to be restored. What the ministry is, is to do in the restored church and bringing about a harvest and making up the remainder of the bride. Um, how Babylon is to be judged first, God's going to need to get all of his people out of Babylon that can be got out of Babylon. Everyone's not going to come out of Babylon, but, uh, but God's going to give an opportunity to all his people. Saints, it's going to take a, and men of God that are listening, it's going to take a, a genuine operation of the Holy Ghost with demonstration and power of God just like they had in the early church to bear enough witness to this world of God's full manifestation, uh, understanding the truth of God's word and seeing God's uh, operation. Uh, the, you know, uh, many of the miracles, signs, healings, casting out of devils that took place in the early church was simply a, and I don't guess I should call it simple, but it was, it was clearly a manifestation of God to draw people to see uh, his manifestation and to know that he was real. And he also bore it out with judgment. And so uh, we'll have to have that again down here to actually reach God's people. There's so much confusion right now in the world altogether including Christianity and all the different uh, groups or bodies of people that call themselves the body of Christ, yet they're not the body of Christ. You can't, you can't be a part of a body that's separated totally from another body and call them both part of the same body. It's just, that's just not feasible. It's not even re reasonable. And so God's going to restore his church and he will harvest this world and make up the remainder of his bride We've, we've basically covered that. We've talked about the two-horned beast that, uh, that come up out of the earth. I think that's important to understand that, and I'm just recapping here a little bit, that uh, in the 13th chapter of the book of Revelations, John saw a beast with seven heads and 10 horns uh, come up out of the sea. And I've explained that, that the sea is talking about people's nations and tongues. It's the world, those world powers, dragon powers, uh, world, uh, they rule the world, Egypt, Assyria, uh, Babylon, Medo-Persia, Greece, and Rome. And then I've said, my position is the seventh beats be the United States of America. It'll be a short-lived dragon system. Uh, and then it will set up and make the image to the beast and the eighth head to put the papacy back in power. So, which would be the eighth, which is of the seven. Um, anyway, it takes some explaining, but I mentioned that this, this seven-headed, ten-horned beast come up out of the sea, but... Uh, this two-horned beast come up out of the earth. There's a difference made there. They come up out of the earth having uh, two horns like a lamb, but it spake as a dragon having the same power as the, as the beast before it. It spake as a dragon. So uh, now, now the very fact that it's the earth and not the sea, uh, you know, I've used this, uh, allegory that the sea is, you know, flat, all the same level, sea level is, is zero. But the earth is a, it rises up out of the sea. It's higher than the sea, which is, I'm telling you, it's religion. In the book of Revelation, the earth represents religion. And America was developed out of the religious Christian, Christ, religious Christianity movement. 
of the Reform Reformation that brought our forefathers to America and uh, and their two horns were religious and civil power. Our forefathers loved God. They were God-fearing men. They were faithful men. They came here for a freedom of religion. They fled the system of the Eastern world or the beast system over there, and they fled here to develop a nation, one nation under God. And I believe God put it in their mind to put in our constitution a separation of church and state. Their intent was is to have a civil laws that would maintain peace among the people, but not interfere with God's church and let the Lord and the people give them freedom of religion, let the church develop. And, uh, you know, I, I understand that democracy has, has a lot of loopholes in it. Our forefathers, I don't think ever foresaw that the loopholes would be developed the way they have been and that America would turn away from God fearing, uh, uh, the fear of God and the awe of God and uh, that we would open up laws for everything. Our forefathers never intended, I don't think, for anything but Christianity one nation under God, and they clearly meant the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So <clears throat> this was the beast that come up out of sea with two horns, civil and religious power, but it did develop and finally spake as a dragon, a world power. And you'd have to be somewhat remiss not to admit that, that the United States is becoming, is a world power, but it's becoming a a world ruler and uh, and it it will build the the uh image to the beast and so we we got that far in in our study so far of what's got to take place yet church has got to be restored that church ministry is going to have to uh have a ministry that will harvest this world and make up the remainder of the bride the babylon that is, all of the systems and organizations will have to, God will have to get his people out of that and bring them into his one body. And there will just be one faith. Uh, God will restore the truth fully. And, and he will administer a full demonstration of himself to the spirit, through the spirit, and through a ministry and through his people. And, uh, and bring judgment to this world. And so that's going to take place before God's wrath is poured out. And so we had gotten this far, and uh, I had started just a little bit talking about the, the last prophetical hour, uh, which, which most of this work will take place in that last 15 years, which is a, the last prophetical hour. But I had mentioned just a little bit on the seven last plagues, the, the last vials. Um, let me say just a little bit about these, uh, about the, the seven last vials. Um, and we've, ha we've had a lot of different discussions and we've had a lot of different ideas about uh, the, you know, the book of Revelation in the fifth chapter starts off with the seven seals and it, uh, the eighth chapter gives us the seven trumpets and here in the 15th and 16th chapter of the book of Revelation gives us the seven seals, I mean the seven plagues or vials having the last plagues. Uh, none of these uh, are in are necess they're not in conjunction with each other. The seven seals I've explained before that the seven seals, the first six are just synoptic pieces of information. And the first, and, and I'm telling you, it's the first six. The first one is just a white horse, rider on it, had a bow in his hand. He went forth conquering and to conquer. That's it. 
that's the information. You have to use the Bible to interpret that that white horse is the New Testament church of white being righteous. The bow in his hand was Jesus with the word of God going forth, conquering and to conquer. He was the rider of the horse. But then uh, the horse color changed. The hair's color to red, changed to red. And so did the rider. The rider had a sword in his hand and he was given power to hurt men. And that's when the church fell into, that's when the church began to fall away and fell into a Pentecostal type uh, era. And uh, men had the word of God, but they didn't have a lot of wisdom and they, they hurt a lot of people. And that's really where we're back to today. You know, the church fell from the white horse to the red horse of Pentecostal state to a black horse of Protestant state and then the pale horse or death and hell was the rider of the horse and ruled this world for 1260 years. Uh, but then when the Reformation started, it, it, God began to reform the church and we came out of death and hell, the pale horse, back into a black horse. The black is a picture of darkness or ignorance we had some knowledge, but not enough to really understand fully what God was, what the Word of God was saying. But then, with the Day of Pentecost coming after the Reformation had uh, existed 360 years, then uh, Pentecost came back in and started the Red Horse again, and that's that's where we're at today. Except I'm going to say that there's some white hairs coming back into this horse. Uh, and finally, we are to get back to the white horse. The 19th chapter of the book of Revelation shows Jesus coming, riding a white horse, and they that were with him were on white horses. They were the called, chosen, and faithful people of God that would rule and reign with him, the righteous. And so... Uh, but I'm just telling you those, those seals were just pieces of information and information that just gave a synoptic form. Now the seventh seal starts in the eighth chapter of the book of Revelations and that seal opens and it, the seventh seal is all the way to the end of the book. It's not synoptic. It is detailed and it explains everything everything that the first six seals didn't explain and it puts it in different types of, of allegories and different symbols and pictures but it begins to show in greater detail exactly what's going to take place during the Gentile world. It starts off with the seven trumpets and those seven trumpets are time frames. The first one, Jesus blew the first trumpet. The second one, the, the apostles blew the second trumpet. Uh, see, and you can't use them in conjunction like with the seals. The first seal, the white horse, the first trumpet was Jesus. That was during the white, that was during the white horse. The second seal was the apostles. That was during the white horse. Now the third seal, uh, that is uh, when uh, a star fell from heaven and a bitterness entered into the waters. And that was um, when the church fell and that turned into a Pentecostal red horse state. So <clears throat> you have to look at the, the, the seals and where they're at uh, to, to, to understand what those seals are saying. But this, this seventh seal, it, it's showing, it's starting off with the judgment that took place in the early church, but it goes on, everything in the seven seals. Now the seven trumpets, see, that takes you through to the falling away of the church, the four seals, AD 70, the fifth seal is Mohammedism warring against Catholicism. The, the uh, fifth seal in, in, in uh, that is, um, for, for the fifth seal is Mohammedism war against Catholicism. The sixth seal begins the Reformation. And the seventh, uh, I'm, I mean, that's the sixth trumpet. I'm sorry, I was 
working on trumpets, the first trumpet, second trumpet, third trumpet, and so forth. And so, but the seventh trumpet is the last prophetical hour, which is after the Re Reformation. So you sort of have to understand the chronology of how all this takes place. And so, uh, and by the way, uh, Brother, Brother Painter, who's in charge of our media in the church, uh, he is, uh, he's archiving these messages that I'm giving. So you don't necessarily have to feel like you gotta get everything I'm saying. It's took me, saints, it's took me probably 25 or 30 years to, to have, understand what I'm saying tonight. And so I can't expect y'all to have it the very minute I tell it, but I'm trying to at least share what I have on it. And I'm sure that there'll be men of God that will improve on it and, and tweak it a little bit. Uh, you know, and anything that I have wrong, well, I certainly won't correct it. But I'm giving you my position on everything that I can see right now. I'm, uh, I've changed. Uh, I've been gonna write a book on the book of Revelation explaining it for some time now. And the reason I haven't wrote it is because I keep getting new uh, uh, understanding on it. And, and I'll, I'll make little changes and tweak it a little bit. And so I've just held off some until um, I can feel comfortable, which I'm, I'm about there, but um, I'd love to be able to leave what I've got so that younger men would have a platform to study from and work from there. And then they together with the ministry and their generation could continue to work on it. But I feel like God has gave much greater understanding in the day we're living in, in this book than we've had in the past. And I think the people of God are, ought to be able to at least know where we're at in our position on it at this time. So with that said, um, we'll, we'll talk here a little bit about the, the last vials in the 16th chapter of the book of Revelations, if you want to go there. And uh, this should end pretty well end our, our sessions on these, the succession of things that, and events that has to take place um, before the end of the Gentile world. These last vials is the wrath of God and the judgment that's gonna come on at the end. In fact, if you want me to, I'll just read a little bit in the 15th chapter. Uh, it lays the foundation for it. John said, I saw another, I'm in the first verse, Another sign in heaven, great and marvelous, seven angels having the seven last plagues, for in them is filled up the wrath of God. And I saw, as it were, a sea of glass mingled with fire, and them that had gotten the victory over the beast and over his image and over his mark and over the number of his name stand on the sea of glass having the harps of God. Notice here, they got victory over the beast and over his image. See, the, the image doesn't even come into play until the 13th chapter when it's made. But now, once the image was made, they are the requirement to work, for everyone to worship the image, uh, which is... You know what an image is. It's exactly the same thing as what it's an image of. And so it's going to it's gonna put us right back in the same beast system that ruled before it. Um, the 13th chapter said, the beast that was whose, whose wound was healed. So, <clears throat> so they got victory over that and over his mark and over, and, and, they were standing on a sea of glass having the harps of God. I'm saying the sea of glass here is, is the, it's, it's typical. It's symbolic of the labor, which is, uh, not the labor, I'm sorry, the holy place. No, no, the labor, which is before the holy place. In other words, there's where they're washed by the, what, by the water of the word of God and made righteous to go into the holy place. And so they got victory and there was judgment in that. 
Uh, and verse three says, and they sing the song of Moses, the servant of God, and the song of the lamb saying, great and marvelous are thy works, Lord God almighty, just and true are thy ways, thou king of saints. Who shall fear, who shall not fear thee, O Lord, and glorify thy name? For thou art only, art holy, for all nations shall come and worship before thee, for the judgment of are made, thy judgments are made manifest. And after that, I looked and behold the temple uh, of the tabernacle of the testimony in heaven was opened. And the seven angels came out of the temple having the seven plagues clothed in pure and white, uh, white linen and having their breasts girded with golden girdles. And one of the four beasts gave unto the seven angels seven golden vials full of the wrath of God who lived forever and ever. And the temple was filled with smoke and the glory of God for and from his power. And no man was able to enter into the temple until the seven plagues of the seven angels were fulfilled. It looks like God had made up, harvested uh, the remainder of his bride and no one was able to enter the temple or overcome sin while this judgment of these last seven plagues were, were poured out. So there's a time of judgment that's coming in the end of this world that God's going to finish his work. And uh, so verse one, chapter 16 says, and I heard a great voice out of the temple saying to the seven angels, go your ways and pour out the vials of the wrath of God upon the earth. And the first went out and poured his vial upon the earth and there fell a noisome and greasome sore or wound upon the men which had the mark of the beast and upon them which worshiped his name. Now here there's, there's judgments being applied in different areas uh, categorically. God's judging certain things. Here it's the, the first vials poured out upon the earth and it's poured out upon those that have the mark of the beast and on them that worshiped his image. And remember, I told you the earth, I feel the earth is the United States of America. It's actually religion that formed and that the United States of America was developed out of the Reformation movement and uh, caused our nation to become what it was in this two-horned beast. Uh, I, that's the best that I have on it, and I'm going to stick. Somebody said that's that's my answer, and I'm sticking with it. That's my final answer. Well, I'm not going to say that because I could change if God shows me something different, but that's the best answer that I have for it at, at this time. And so the first was poured out upon the earth and on those that had, had received the mark of the beast and worshiped his image. Then the second, and let me, let me just say this, it's not just, not just America alone. There's many countries that's going to come in, uh, be influenced, They're going to be influenced by this image of the beast. And that, that religious element, God is going to judge because it has caused people to turn to the beast system and take the mark of the beast and worship the image, the mark of the beast and, and its image. And so God is going to judge that. God's gonna, he's gonna wound that system. All right, then the next one, the second angel poured out his vial upon the sea and it became as blood of dead men, and every living soul died in the sea. Now, if you look in the seventh chapter of the book of Revelations, um, and, and that this is it during the sixth seal, and it, it, uh, the angels come out, uh, angel comes out and begins to declare to the four winds that, they hurt not the earth. Here again, this religious system that I'm saying 
actually developed the United States of America, but it is, it is an ecclesiastical system. It's not the body of Christ. It's, it's the dragon power or the world power two horn, of the two-horned beast. But uh, in the seventh chapter, you can read it for yourself, the angel declared there or directed not to hurt the earth or the sea or any green tree. Well, the sea is people's nations and tongues, the angel told John in the 17th chapter. That, that is the uh, uh, the the world. In other words, God's got people. This is why the Lord said, don't you hurt the world until I seal my servants in their foreheads, is because they were not that God's got many people that are in the world. They're not just, they're unjust, but they're God's children. Some of them literally starved to death in Babylon. They did not get enough of the word of God. They got enough of, of witness that God was true and they wanted God, but they, they couldn't get enough understanding and they remained in enough ignorance that they literally spiritually starved to death, just went back into the world. They're God's children, uh, but, but they, they lost confidence in whatever they had found in Christianity. Then there's people, just like I mentioned in the Red Horse, that are victims. They got hurt. They got hurt by men that didn't have wisdom. They had the word of God, but they didn't have enough wisdom to, to refrain from hurting God's people. And there's, there's people of God that were victims of situations in the church and they're out in the world today. They lost confidence, but they're God's children. Now, before God gets ready to judge, judge the sea, he's gonna get everything out of there that he can get out of there. Before, just like it says in the seventh chapter of the book of Revelations, hurt not the sea until I seal my servants in their forehead. God will gather many people. Don't give up. Don't give up on your family, friends, or loved ones that's out in, that's out of the body or out and, and they know God. You know they've been born again, but they, for whatever reason. Now, now let me know, I'm not giving them a full crutch because there's some people that worked iniquity. There's some people that, that just didn't have enough will to serve God. But they didn't live in a time either when there was a full manifestation of God and God's not gonna eternally judge them until he can show them a full manifestation and hear the truth of the word of God. So there's a lot that's gotta take place, but after God gets his people out of the sea that can be God out of the sea, then he is going to judge the sea. Remember in the second trumpet, now that was talking about the early church. In the second trumpet, um, it said that, uh, let, let's read it real quick. It's in the eighth chapter of the book of Revelations. Might be better to read it than to maybe not quote it exactly right. <laughs> Okay, in the eighth verse, eighth chapter and eighth verse, it says, and the second angel sounded, this was the second trumpet, and as it were a great mountain burning with fire was cast into the sea and the third part of the sea became blood. Okay, let me, let me explain that. Okay, you remember Jesus told his disciples that if you've got faith as a grain of a mustard seed, you can say unto this, mountain, be thou removed and be cast into the sea. He was talking about the mountain of religion of that day, Judaism, that had influence and, uh, and really imprisoned all of God's people. They had missed it. They missed the Messiah when he came. But this second angel that sounded was the apostles. Uh, as it were a great mountain burning with fire and was cast in the sea and a third part of the sea became blood and the third part of the creatures were in the sea had life died and the third part of the ships were destroyed. Now, I'm gonna explain this third part to you because 
It's important that you understand that. But I'm, I'm, I'm showing you that this, la this vial, this, the second vial, is going to judge down here in the end of the Gentile world just like the second trumpet judged in the early church. And a third part of the sea became blood. That's not talking about uh, 33 and a third percent of what existed in that day of the river, which was talking about the river, uh, you know, life, well, the Christianity, God's people. All right. <clears throat> there, there's only three times that God judges eternally. He judged eternally in the Jewish world after the new covenant. He'll judge eternally again in the restored church down here in the last prophetical hour of the Gentile world. And he'll judge, and each one of these are thirds. Everything was judged back there in the early church, not just a third. It was a third of God's eternal judgment. The other third's gonna be down here. That's two thirds. And the, th the third third, <laughs> excuse me, uh, is during the thousand year millennial and the great white throne judgment in the beginning of the eighth day after the thousand years. Those are the three thirds of how God judges things. A third was judged. If you'll notice, um, let, let's read the next angel, the third angel, the third trumpet in, in eight, Revelations 8 and 10. And the third angel sounded and there fell a great star from heaven this is when the ministry fell and the church fell away in the early church, burning as it were a lamp and it fell upon a third part of the rivers and upon, and, and upon the fountains of waters. And the name of the star was called Wormwood. That means bitterness. And the third part of the waters became Wormwood and, and many men died of the waters because they were made bitter. That's when the church fell away and God judged everything that didn't, that didn't heed to his judgment and come into the body of Christ and, and obey the word of God and uh, finish their course. There, God judged that and the church fell away. And that was a third part. It, different elements that God judged back there. Okay, so now go back to the 16th chapter. And so the second angel, verse three, poured out his vial upon the sea and the sea became blood of, and every living soul died. Once God gets all of his people out of <clears throat> uh, the world that's out there in the world, they're his children, they're unjust, but God's gonna give them an opportunity. See, that's what's going to happen in the last prophetical hour. I mean, in the last, uh, I'm sorry, in the great white throne judgment after the millennial, there's going to be a resurrection of the unjust and all of those people are unjust, but God's going to give them an opportunity to hear the truth and see his manifestation. God's not going to eternally judge someone that, he, that his judgment's not just. He's going to make sure they understand. They, they have an opportunity to respond to him. If they reject him, there's no, God's not going to give a resurrection to someone in the early church that saw everything God had to offer and rejected it. He's not going to bring them up in a resurrection, another resurrection all they're going to see is what they already rejected. What more could God show them? And that's going to happen down here, down through the to the uh, Gentile times from the falling away of the church until the church is restored. God's going to give an opportunity to his unjust people um, that uh, he will, you know, that are living that during the time of a restored church, He's going to give them an opportunity to come out of this world and receive what he has and, and accept him as their savior. And they will have uh, the tools to work with to finish their course. Uh, when, when God's finished and he can't get anything else out of that, he is going to pour out a vial 
and the end of this world. God's going to pour out on wild and everything in the sea. Everything in the world is going to be judged eternally and there's not going to be hope for them. Then in verse four, it says, the third angel poured out his vial upon the rivers and the fountains of waters and they became blood. Now remember, we read that in the third trumpet in the early church, the same judgment took place. It was eternal judgment a vial there in judgment that those apostles poured out. Uh, the church fell away and God judged, you know, and uh, uh, upon the, uh, what did it say? Upon the rivers and fountains of waters, wormwood, the star fell and it was called wormwood and it made the waters bitter. That was the falling away of the church and the ministry that fell away and began to teach falsehoods that, that corrupted the pure spirit of God and the truth of the word of God. And, and God judged that. And he's gonna judge it again down here. Everything in the rivers of water and the fountains of water, that is God's people. Everybody, everybody in everyone in this is not going to uh, respond. Everyone in this is not going to hear God. Everyone is not, not going to uh, respond to this final judgment and final uh, seven-fold life that God's going to manifest. And when God is finished getting everything uh out of that, that he can get out of that or develop out of that, he's going to judge it. And look what it says in verse five. It says, and I heard the angel of the water say, thou art righteous, O Lord, which art and was and shall be because thou hast judged thus. For they have shed the blood of saints and prophets and thou hast given them blood to drink for they are worthy. See, there's people that are going to turn against God's people. You know, they're, in other words, they're, they are going to join up. Uh, they may not join the beast system, but they won't, they won't, they'll, they'll remain separate. And many of them will be in their own spirit and a fighting spirit. And, and, uh, and God will judge that if they don't finally heed to God, but God in his mercy and grace, he will give opportunity to all of these people. And so, but, you know, look what they said. They said, thou art righteous, O Lord, which art, was, and shall be, because thou hast judged, for they have shed the blood of the saints and prophets, and thou hast given them blood to drink, for they are worthy. And I heard another out of the altar say, even so, Lord God Almighty, true and righteous are thy judgments. All right, so then the fourth angel, verse eight, the fourth angel poured out his vial upon the sun and power was given unto him to scorch men with fire. And men were scorched with great heat and blasphemed the name of God, which hath power over these plagues and they repented not to give him glory. In other words, the Son, which which is the Word of God, there there will be a ministry that's going to preach judgment. It'll be a long, it will be with mercy, but it will be a stronger judgment than you see today. You know, I've often said, just like in the early church, when Ananias and Sapphira lied and before Peter, and God struck them both dead. I've often said, you know, there's a lot of people that's done a lot worse than that today. But we're not living in a time where God sets forth eternal judgment, the judgment seat of Christ, that he's not going to dilly-dally any longer. And the Bible said when Ananias and Sapphira were struck down, it said fear fell upon them all. And so God is going to, He's going to cause people to fear him. They, they didn't do as great a sin as some people may have done today that are even in the church, but they were living in a time that God set up severe judgment. God set up a time that it's time that I'm gonna require 
I'm going to require every man living in a righteous way and not playing games with me. And so it'll be a serious time, a sober time. Uh, and so the son, the, the word of God is going to bring judgment. God will back up men in this uh, restored church. Once it's restored, God will back his men up. And what did he tell the apostles back there? Said, whatsoever you, uh, he, he let them know he would back them up. Uh, you know, whosoever sins you remit, they'll be remitted. Whose you won't remit, won't be remitted. God's gonna have men that God, the Lord's gonna work with close enough that they're gonna, God's gonna give them power just like he did the early apostles. And so these judgments will take place, but we're talking about the very end of the religious world. You know, we're uh, of the, in the Gentile world of religion. We're talking about when God's gonna judge down here. So, uh, then verse 10 says, and the fifth angel poured out his vial upon the seat of the beast and his kingdom was full of darkness and they gnawed their tongues to, for pain and blasphemed the God of heaven because of their pains and their sores and repented not of their deeds. So that's one category. God is going to judge. He's gonna pour out judgment on the seat of the beast are the seat of authority that the beast has that gives him authority. God is going to judge that uh, that system. God God is going to manifest judgment to that, just like He manifested judgment to the to Judaism back there. God's going to judge the system. He's not going to just judge the people because the system is what made the people do what they what they done and were deceived by the system but they did not heed to God also during that time. Then verse 12 said, and the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates and the water thereof was dried up and uh, that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. Now, if you remember in the 17th chapter, uh, Euphrates, is that's referring to Babylon. And God not only is going to get all his people out of Babylon, but he is going to judge Babylon. He's going to judge that system. And that's going to prepare the way of the kings of the east, the 10 kings that are going to come into power. That they will come into power uh, because the beast system is going to be judged, which is going to be uh, not only a seat, but Euphrates, the 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 body of it, the believers of it. God is going to get his, if you remember in the 18th chapter where God judges that in the last prophetical hour, finally, the sound of the millstone will be heard no more at all in her. The light of the candle will be shown at no more at all in her. The voice of the bride and the voice of the bridegroom will be heard no more at all in her. God will... He's going to dry up Euphrates. God's going to withdraw himself completely. Right now, you can find God out there because his people are out there and he loves them. And God's still working to gather his people together in one body in the end of this world. But uh, God will gather, he'll gather those people together. But when he can't get any more of his people out of that, he will ultimately judge that system. It will completely dry up and when it does, that will prepare the way of the kings of the east or the 10 kings that are gonna come into power. No one will have any confidence in the religious system anymore once it's been judged. And that will prepare the way for the 10 kings to come into power. And uh, of course that beast system, that's gonna, again, that's a dragon that's gonna rule the world. I say the United States at that time will no longer be a world power. It will be judged. God will judge this nation because this is the nation that he poured out. He gave his wrath to and developed to develop his body and to harvest uh, the bride or the church in 
in the end of the world. And that's going to take place in America, but the nation itself has turned from God and God will judge it. And he'll give the power to the beast, which is the eighth head for a time, but then the 10 kings finally will destroy that. If you remember the 17th chapter of the book of Revelations, I'll read that to you. Um, it says in verse 16, and the 10 horns which thou sawest unto the be uh, upon the beast, they shall hate the whore and shall make her desolate and naked and shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire. For God hath put it in their hearts to fulfill his will and to agree and give their kingdom unto the beast, eat unto the words of, uh, until the works, words of God shall be fulfilled. Uh, so uh, those 10 kings, will, they'll, they'll ultimately destroy, once the beast system judged by God, they will judge the, the body of it and the uh, influence of it w will already have been dissipated. And so it, it will be judged and the 10 kings will, will come into power for a period of time. Now, if we go back to uh, uh, let's see. Okay, let's go back to the 16th chapter, the sixth angel, the 12th verse. The sixth angel poured out his uh, vial upon the river Euphrates. I'd read this, but I want to go on with it. And water thereof was dried up that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon and the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet. That's, that's why it's three spirits like frogs. It's, it, it comes from the dragon, it comes from the beast, and it comes from the false prophet. For they are spirits of devils working miracles which go forth into the kings of the earth and the whole world to gather them together of that great day of God Almighty. You, so, and, and I don't know if he was ever raised in the country, but if he was raised in the country, uh, and you know anything about frogs, you know, frogs at nighttime, if you go out in the country, they'll be gathered around the ponds, you know, water, uh, bodies of water, and they'll be croaking out there and what it is, it's the males croaking and they're, and they're calling. They're calling frogs, you know. And, of course, we've, we've always, you know, when you hear preachers preach about this, they'll always say they're, you know, when you hear these frogs, frogs are saying, Have you ever heard of uh, frogs? Of course, they're just croaking, really, but... But anyway, it, what they're saying is, is they're gathering together. They're calling everyone together under that system. And, uh, and he said, behold, I come, Jesus said, behold, I come as a thief. Blessed are they that watcheth and keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. And he gathered them together into a place called in the Hebrew tongue, Armageddon. God's going to ultimately finish this, these seven plagues in the judgment of Armageddon that's going to be the final judgment uh, that's going to come, devastation that's going to come on the end of the Gentile world. And verse 17 said, And the seventh angel poured out his vial upon the air, and there came a great voice out of the temple of heaven from the throne saying, It is done. And there were voices and thunderings and lightnings. And there was a great earthquake, such as was not since men were upon the earth. So mighty an earthquake and so great. And the great city was divided in three parts. The cities of the nations fell. And great Babylon came into remembrance before God to give unto her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. And every island fled away, and the mountains were not found. And there fell upon men a great hail out of heaven, every stone about the weight of, the talent, of a talent. And men blasphemed God because of the plague of the hail, and the plague thereof was exceedingly great. 
So the final judgment will come in the end of this world and uh, it will finally bring judgment upon this world. It will judge the systems of this world. You know, the, the beast system, it'll judge the, the, the body of it. It'll judge the, the ideology of it or the, the doctrines of it or laws of it. It's all made up of a dragon system and the spirit of it. God will judge the whole thing and he will finally bring ultimate judgment on that having made up his pride. And then after this devastation takes place, it will humble, it'll humble the people of this world enough that uh, I, I did mention last week that one of the things that will transpire prior to this is that God will graft the Jews back into the olive tree. God will bring the natural Jew. Of course, they won't be claiming natural Judaism anymore or a heritage that way, but they, they will come into the body of Christ and receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. They'll be born again and they'll receive a message, uh, this message and a vision, and they, they will prevent the church from falling away again. And they'll take with the help of Jesus and his bride down through the thousand years and begin to clean up this world. It'll take a thousand years for that to transpire. But that'll be after the judgment of the Gentile world I'd certainly like to, I'd like to uh, qualify to serve with the Lord and his bride and, and see what all is going to be accomplished and the, the righteousness and peace uh, that, you know, I, I'm trying to serve God. I'm trying to please him. I don't want uh, to get out of step with God. Uh, and it, it's all of us, all of us. This is our testimony and it's our, our walk with God. We're all trying to, you know, I think most of God's people want to do what's right and they want to serve him. And uh, I know we're not on the, all on the same page, but I think God will get us there. We'll just be patient. How did uh, Paul say it in Ephesians 4? He said, um, he said, brethren, I, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you are called uh, with all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. So we have to, uh, you know, even in areas we don't agree, we still have to love one another. We still have to, have peace with one another. We have to work on that and we have to forgive one another and keep walking together. We cannot afford to separate uh, and uh, stand against one another. You know, we, it takes a lot more strength to work in unity and seek peace than it does to divide and separate. And so that's something we need to work for, uh, work especially during this time because we're living in a time that it's important for us to, to come up with what God's asking of us because we are nearing the end of this world. And so sometimes we just have to labor uh, to get our mindset back on focusing God. I've often said that concerning Jesus and his people or the church, you know, my, my serving God is like a marriage. I'm having to work on it. I'm having to work on pleasing God. I'm having to work on getting my spirit right and doing what is righteous and what he wants out of me. Just, to, it's a good picture of marriage. You know, when you, that's what marriage is a picture of. I'm bound, I'm bound forever. So that was my commitment. That's what God wanted me to do that I'm, I'm to work out my differences with my wife and we're to become one. Isn't that what Jesus said, that man is to leave his mother and father and be joined to one uh, wife, joined to his wife, and they too become one flesh. Well, let me tell you something. It doesn't, you don't become one flesh on your honeymoon. You don't become one flesh in your first five years or first 10 or 15 years, but it takes time of working at it and laboring at it and you, you just have to keep at it. 
But if you have a mindset that if the man and woman have both have the mindset that I can do this because God said I could. The Lord said he would help me and he would help my husband. He'll help my wife and we can work and labor together in the Lord and he can make us be at peace with each other. You have to have faith in God to believe that because we're living in a world where people believe that, you know, uh, that if, if we can't make it, we'll just split. Well, that's certainly not God's word, neither is it God's will. And it's not God's will for me to separate myself from him or his people either. I have to stick with God and the body of Christ and work out my differences, mainly with the Lord, but it's, it's mainly, it ain't me. He, he don't have anything to work out. It's I'm the one working things out. And so are you. God bless your hearts. Let me see what time it is. All right. Believe it or not, it's been one hour I've been on here. And I gave I gave all of that in just an hour period of time. So <clears throat> I hope you enjoyed it. I hope in some way I want you to be in, in encouraged. Hi, Sister Layton. God bless your heart. I'm glad you're here. If you didn't get to hear everything today, well, it's on our it's on our website. Uh, it's archived. Brother Painter's got it on there. And I will post it as soon as I get through so you can listen to it uh, again or for your first time. Anyway, again, we will be having church this Sunday morning at 1130. I'm really looking forward to being there with all of you. God bless your hearts. Uh, let's come prayed up and ask the Lord to touch us and help us, you know, and all of this that's been going on. It's, it's, it's going to be a little bit different. We've been uh, out from having services together for some time. And, and uh, so let's remember all of our needs. Once again, I want to thank everyone for your prayers. I want to thank you for being faithful to continue to send in your tithes and offerings it's kept the finances of the church up to where we can pay our bills and stay above water, so to speak. Thank you. You're a, you're a wonderful group of people, the church here is. So uh, uh, we will have a work day Saturday at 8 o'clock for the men, and it, it shouldn't take us long. We'll meet at 8 o'clock. Um, and it probably will probably be done by 10, 1030. We're going to get the yard fixed up and just go over things that needs to be done. It won't be an intense work day, but we need to get some things done. Also, on Sunday morning, there will be an elders meeting at uh, 11 o'clock. I may have put 1045 down when I send it to the elders. I'm thinking that I did. I'm planning on trying to be there around 1030, uh, maybe with and we'll meet in the dining room so we can have uh, proper spacing rather than set at our elders table where we're just, you know, a foot from each other, basically. But in the dining room, we can set at different tables and have proper spacing. We'll have coffee and, and some donuts there. So I'm planning on trying to get there around, around 1030. Service will be at 1130. We'll have an elders meeting around uh, 11. <clears throat> so looking forward to seeing you, brother, and I miss every one of you. God bless your hearts. Pray for me. Pray for the body of Jesus Christ. Pray for our leaders in this world. I'm telling you, I'm concerned about where we're at, and I'm also confused because I don't know who to believe about all this coronavirus that is going on. I, there is so much differences being spoken Um uh, not only by the media, but also others. And uh, it's, just, it's just confusing. And uh, I, told, I told several this week, I said, who do we believe? <laughs> you know, I'm just about where I want to turn, the, turn off the TV and quit listening to the news because it just gets you in a worse condition, it seems like. What I do trust in is the Lord Jesus Christ. And I know his hands upon us and I know he will see us through this. Pray for the church's needs. I won't go over them because of the time. God bless your heart. I'll see you Sunday morning to you local church people. And uh, we will have a Thursday 7 p.m. Bible study again 
live right here on on the air on on my Facebook page. So some have asked me to keep that up. I don't know that we'll continue on where we're at because I've, I've pretty well finished uh, what we started a, a few weeks ago. So we'll talk to you then. God bless your hearts. Pray for me and I'll pray for you. Good night and safekeeping in the Lord. God bless.